let me first introduce myself. Uh, I'm Marwa Saoudi, a PhD student at Tallinn University School of Digital Technologies. Uh, I'm happy to be with you today and uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, responsible green AI. So uh, let's start that uh, with the fact that AI is not singular. Uh, AI is a broad research area and includes thousands and more different technologies and uh, problems. So uh, those technologies and problems are different from each other. Algorithms nowadays can use our data and can analyze those data and start to take uh, actions or make recommendations based on uh, the data collected. So we should regulate in brief the outcome of the use, not the AI technology. So um, I love this quote. It's a very big one, but I love it because it, it, it summarizes the AI ethics discussion. So first of all, we have uh, the responsible ethical AI uh, waves. And we have like three waves. The first one, like science fiction movies, um, talking about how robots are going to manipulate us, how they are going to control our lives and so on. Then the second wave related to responsible AI discussions and uh, the AI ethics and um, uh, talking about the, the, the black box problem. Uh, then we had uh, nowadays, we are having nowadays, we're witnessing nowadays, the third AI ethics wave, which is concerned about um, the green uh, energy, uh, sorry, the green effect of, a, of, of, of AI systems, um, their effect, their footprint, how they are affecting our environment and uh, how we can have a sustainable AI system. We'll start here in our presentation talking about the second wave. So in the second wave, before even ChatGPT, before 2022, we had like one, more than 170 guidelines from different institutes from China from uh, and from different countries and regions. We had from China, from Canada, from EU, from UNESCO, from UK, the World Economic Forum and so on. And... Uh, let us see like the description of um, responsible AI dimensions. So uh, when we say that we are looking for uh, a responsible AI system, what we are looking for? So we are looking for certain dimensions. So we need the, those AI systems to be fair. We need them to be transparent. We need them to be accountable. We need them uh, to be robust and safe. Uh, we are concerned about the laws and regulations with data governments, the human oversight, and the societal and environmental well-being. One of the examples of how governments are uh, taking actions, we can see here the Korean government. So uh, we see the Korean government published on their website their vision and goals for having a trustworthy AI for uh, 2025. So we can see that governments are already putting the strategies uh, for uh, and visions on having responsible AI systems. Uh, the classification of AI risks according to the EU Commission by April 2021 is one of my favorites. So in uh, the EU Commission started first by having um, an expert group on 2018 and 19 to, to define artificial intelligence and uh, to define uh, trustworthy artificial intelligence and to, 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 to think about uh, the trustworthy artificial intelligence and uh, to put like... Uh, dimensions for, for, for trustworthy AI. Uh, then by April 2021, we had the EU classification for the risks, and uh, they classified the AI systems into four risks. We have the unacceptable risk, those systems that manipulate uh, human behavior, and we have the high risk, something like uh, safety products, CV sorting, um, credit scoring, and we have the limited risk, with, which was chatbots. Let's Let's agree that that was 2021, so chatbots now is an issue, the large language models. And uh, we have the minimal uh, risk like video games or spam filters. Now let's move to the third wave to have a look at the third wave. So in the third wave, um, it looks uh, for the environmental impact of AI systems. So the impact of ICT technologies on the environment has been widely discussed for more than two decades ago. 
But when it comes to AI, we can see that like 76% um, of the published research around the environmental impact of AI has been published since 2022. So this is still an immature discussion, a recent and emerging discussion related to the effect of AI systems on the environment. And to put that into consideration from the ethics point of view. So the UNESCO 22, uh, 2022 report on ethics of AI recommends that governments assess the direct and indirect environmental impact throughout the AI life cycle and not use AI systems when there are negative impacts on the environment. So in that report, it was clear that the environment effect of uh, the AI effect on the environment is something crucial. And if, and if this, um, there is a bad effect on the environment, this system shouldn't be used. So we see that the e-commerce uh, poses issues for consumer protection because there is, could be manipulation on purchasing some products and also it has environmental footprint. So this is an example for, 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 for a responsible green system that we needed to be a responsible green system. And the data centers, like 50% of the data centers having no free cooling system in place. So, um, and this is also, let us see the importance of this discussion because with this, with this sort of discussion, forces um, companies, large companies like uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft to start to use uh, renewable energy on their data centers. So this is why we should keep an eye on the um, uh, carbon dioxide emissions or the environmental footprint <clears throat> of data centers. <laughs> and on the AI systems and what resources that they are consuming. By the end, AI is not falling from the sky. They are not up on the trees. So we need to, to pay attention on that. Now let's move to something else, which are the incidents and accidents that might happen. Human in the loop could be one of the solutions, like keeping a human eye to, to track the risks. So one of the famous accidents that happened, uh, it was the CV sorting AI tool by Amazon, which favored men over women. So the system here, this is one of the clear cases about the biases, the gender biases caused by the system. Now uh, I'm going to uh, briefly discuss three incidents and uh, the relationship of those incidents with the human rights. So those incidents uh, I took from uh, the AI incidents database. It contains a lot of incidents and uh, it's like a library of incidents. And uh, the three incidents uh, that I'm going to mention, I'm going to comment uh, later on on them and about the relationship with the human rights acts. So we have incident one. The original aim of this AI system was to create a cutting edge AI technology that uh, can uh, uh, prevent a crime. So uh, this system uh, started to track certain students and teens based on their like uh, absence from the school, if they are smoking or not, and things like that, and put them that as a variable and uh, as variables and. Um, they started to uh, like uh, track the students and teens and follow them and follow their families and harass their, those families and students. Although those teens or students didn't do any sort of crime, but because the system said that they are potential criminals because of certain behaviors that uh, the algorithm uh, uh, processed. So uh, this is one of the uh, incidents that happened. And then incident two, in which teachers have been uh, publicly scolded uh, or praised uh, in the public according to uh, um, to data which was not an, uh, accurate enough. So uh, the original aim of the AI system in this incident was to rate the teacher's effectiveness. However, more than 12,000 teachers who taught English or math uh, from fourth grade to eighth grade between 2007 and 2010 had been rated based on value added analysis. And the system calculated the teacher's effectiveness in improving student performance on standardized tests based on past test scores. And the problem here is that this approach publicly praised or scolded the teachers, whether deserving or not based on inaccurate and incomplete data. And then incident three, in which uh, the algorithm uh, favored uh, white men and women 
on 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 other uh, species like on other uh, on black or latins uh, in a major uh, to be directed to major studies in certain major studies so race here was a variable in this system to direct certain students to uh, have like uh, powerful majors and uh, other students from other races to less powerful majors. So we see here that incident one and two violated like article 12 of the UN uh, Declaration of the Human Rights. Why, why we are making this sort of constellation? And because having a human rights based approach on uh, classifying um, the incidents or, or looking to AI ethics from from this lens might add a lot to our conversation and discussion, might let us see things differently. So um, in incident one and two, if we look if we looked at um, article 12 on, on the UN Universal Declaration, we can see that no one shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with his privacy, family, home, or correspondence, nor to attacks upon his honor, on reputation. Everyone has the right to the protection of the law against such interference or attacks. But we can see in incident one that the police was the one attacking uh, the students, teens, and families before they made any sort of crime. They didn't do anything yet. And also, the reputation of the teachers in the second incident has been publicly uh, affected. And some teachers uh, left teaching, some teachers uh, had the psychological side effects from this incident because uh, because of the system and the system wasn't accurate enough when we go to the incident 3 we can see that the article 26 from the united nations universal declaration of human rights was violated because the article states that everyone had the right to education regardless of their religion regardless of their race so we say that by directing um, a, cert a group of students to study certain majors, then we had um, uh, we are violating the, the rights of those races to study whatever they want to study if they are qualified enough to it, the, the, the freedom to study what they want. So in conclusion, more projects and models around responsible AI are highly needed. This is something that, uh, like the FAIR project, uh, supported by A Plus Alliance, is doing. And finding the right balance to, har to, 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 har to harvest artificial intelligence. So AI is a very valuable tool. It provides us with, the, with the, a lot of, uh, of possibilities. And it unleashes a lot of, 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 uh, of, uh, of possibilities, of things that we can do. But at the same time, we need it to be fair. We need it to be responsible. We need uh, not to harm anyone, not to affect our environment. So finding this balance is what we um, really need to focus on and uh, to reach. Thank you.